Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to this another session on scholarships. And today in this session, we are going to discuss the selection criteria for the Erasmus MS programs. So a lot of like the questions students ask is like there are different criteria. There is some like hard and fast rule. The minimum criteria for an Erasmus scholarship is that you need to have a bachelor's degree, right? A 16 years of education and then you need to just have an IELTS test, English language proficiency. Even sometimes those are exempted as well. For example, when you show your, uh, if you get a letter from your um, institute that you have got your degree in English, in some cases it might be exempted as well. So this is one example profile. OK, so there are there's no specific criteria okay, on which the students are selected. It's basically a combination of different um, aspects. For example, um, this program is known as SSI. So the name uh, is just anonymous. So this guy still got selected for the for this specific program. I joined master's program. Uh, he did a bachelor's in electrical engineering. Like okay, he had a 16 years of education. That is the minimum criteria from last. He had a CGP of 3.79. Okay. CGPA, like some of the people ask, the, okay, what is the minimum CGPA uh, like required? It, it it basically there is no minimum CGPA, right? So it depends. Like for example, the 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 higher GPA you have, the higher you chances you have for getting selected, right? So even if I have seen people like with three GPA or two point eight GPA, they got selected for the program. Why? Because okay, apart from GPA, they had some other. Uh, uh, basically uh, achievements in the CV for which they got selected. So we'll discuss these one by one like OK, what are different criteria on which you need? You can get selected for this specific scholarship program. So here you can see that he has a GP of 3.79, which is quite a good GPA. Maybe he was among the toppers. So he was a gold medalist for the FYP program in his, in his final year project. So he got a gold medal. Then he had an, he had an IELTS score of 7.5. The IELTS score, uh, I think every program has its own criteria. What you need to have like in the, there are four modules reading, writing, listening, speaking. So the when you go to the website of each program for which you want to apply, they tell you, OK, what do they need in that specific program? Like what type of score like in reading or listening or writing and uh, uh, speaking? So he overall, the, the higher the score you have in IELTS, the better it is for you, right? A higher score means that you're quite proficient in English uh, in all the four modules. So for example, if this guy has 7.5, maybe he scored 7, 6 or 7.5 or 8. Um, so on average, his score is 7.5. So this is quite a good score in terms of English proficiency. Minimum, we think it's a six, but it, it depends on uh, every program. You, we just need to look at the criteria specified by each program. Apart from uh, IELTS, he had two internships and 1.5 years work experience. So this is also additional um, things that he had, uh, like he did two internships and he also had a work experience of 1.5 years. Normally I have also seen people selected uh, even if they haven't completed their degree. If they're in their eighth semester, they can apply for the program and they get selected. If they have a good GPA, they have some publications and they have internships. But this guy, he had a lot of things in his CV and uh, so that made him a very strong candidate for uh, for the selection of that specific program. All right. So he had then semester internship projects related to internal things and all those things. So he got selected. Uh, you can see like different uh, things that he had that's that helped him or that supported him like his high GPA, his uh, gold medal in his final year project, then his good score of IELTS. Then he had two internships and then he had 1.5 years of work experience. So all these things basically count towards your criteria for like selection um, for the specific program. So so the um, like it depends like OK, so the number of like he has a lot of things basically which which helped him to, to secure that scholarship, not only the GPA, not only of 16 years degree of education, but also a good score, a work experience and a gold medal and things like that. OK, so this is just one profile. So let's see like another profile. So what's different from that one? So he got selected for a program that is called PIM A plus. The name is also anonymous. So what are his credentials? OK, he got a BS civil engineering uh, from two, in 2018 from Comsar Septabath. He had a CGP of 3.62. 
And on top of that, he also had an MS in structural engineering from NAST Islamabad 3.40 GPA. So you can see like, okay, the minimum requirement is 14 years of education, but you can have even have a, if you have a master's degree, you can still get apply for that and uh, you can get selected for that specific program. All right. So, so he had a working experience of 2.5 years, right? And uh, so he applied for, uh, he also had an English language certificate. Uh, and so, so the plus point in his uh, selection is that he had a good GPA, in both his in undergrad and his master's program. And he also on top of his undergrad degree, he also had a master's degree in, in a specific area. And then he also had a work experience or as assistant engineer in, uh, for 2.5 years. So basically, based on this criteria, he got selected for the program. OK, this is another profile. Uh, so here what were what happened? Uh, so you can see she had a BSc in anthropology, sociology from LAMS, and she had a CGP of 3.53. Worked as two years as research assistant, part time work in a nonprofit education organization. So she had a GPA. You see, like the GPA uh, varies. The first one was 3.79. The second one was 3.6. The third one is 3.5. And the, the experience is also varying. And uh, so here she did not have IELTS. She has a TOEFL 115 over 120, very good score. And then she also had a GRE score of 317 or 340. That's also a very good score. So GRE, you see, <clears throat> this is a kind of like uh, a supporting. Uh, document that you can provide that can help you strengthen your application. So it's GR is not normally not a requirement for the Erasmus programs, but if you have taken already the GR exam, you can also send the results with them. So it will help them uh, to understand. OK, you have got good uh, command um, uh, analytic abilities and all those different modules that are asked in GRE. And then based on that, basically it increases your chances of getting hired uh, or getting selected in the specific program. All right. Uh, so so she also had a GRE. Maybe she also uh, sent results along with the other credentials like the GP and the years of experience and she got selected for a specific program that is uh, the globe. So <clears throat> you can see like the criteria is very different. Now I tell you another example. Like I tell you example of myself like I had a GP of three point it and I did not I just only had one internship and I did not have any experience I did not uh, I had a score of IELTS 7.5 that IELTS you also just need to have it's a compulsory thing in some cases exempted but most of the time you need to take the IELTS as well so I only had just one thing in my CV like I had a GP of 3.82 and I had only done one internship and that's it so I I did not have any work experience. I did not take GRE. I didn't do any MS, right? So all these things were not there in my CV. I was not like uh, a gold medalist in my final project, but I had a good GPA. I was like among the top five students of my class, and I had a score of IELTS around 7.5. So when I applied, I got selected. I uh, and luckily I was in the first list, right? So you can see like the criteria varies from uh, program to program. It also depends like um, uh, who are you competing with, like the other students who applied for those scholarships, where do they stand? So if you compare with them and even if you have just only got a good GPA and rest of them uh, have less GPA, you have higher chances of getting selected. Then I give you another example that uh, one of my friends who was there in that specific scholarship program, uh, and who later on got selected, he had only like a GP of 3.2, right? Uh, so 3.2, it's it's not considered a very, very good GP, but still it's good GP, right? 3.2, and then he had uh, presented a paper, he presented a paper, a conference paper for one of his FIPs. Uh, so he had one international conference in his CV. And then uh, he did not have anything else and he got selected because he presented this one research paper that was something like something uh, state of the art 
that was something new in that area and based on that he got selected so you see the criteria varies he did not have any work experience he did not have any um, ms he did not have any TOEFL. he did not have any gre he did just had the ielts and the gpa 3.2 and then he had this one conference paper that was published in in a good conference and then he worked on some topic that was really uh, a new topic in that specific area and uh, a new research so on that he got selected then there's another example uh, a guy who had a gp of 3.3 and he had one year experience and then he also took the gre exam so initially he was not in the list he was in the waiting list and then when he sent his gre score he got selected sometime it depends like uh, as a lot of people apply for two or three programs so he get selected in two or three programs so then they had to drop a one or two programs and only choose one so when they drop then they just contact the people in the reserve list and then they get selected okay so so this is all about like the selection criteria so so a lot of students ask like what is the selection criteria as i just gave you a lot of examples so there is no specific selection criteria it depends on a number of things a number of factors right so either you are have a good gpa you have a very good research project you have published some papers you have taken gre you have some work experience uh, you have some additional degree or you have taken like online um, uh, courses like the, normally these are also very popular these days called MOOCs massive open online courses so if, uh, if you also take those uh, courses and in that specific area for you applying it also uh, increases your chances of getting selected so these are different uh, aspects and the selection procedure when you're applying for Erasmus uh,